welcome to Driving to the Hoops Basketball Diaries. This is Clint. Uh, please don't forget to like my video and subscribe, and I'd love to see some comments down below as well. Uh, anyway, just uh, thinking about the NBA at 75 and a couple of things that were kind of a little odd about it. Um, some Maybe some people they left off, some people they added that in a way it kind of didn't make sense. Um, so I'll just kind of dive right in. I, uh, the first, the most <laughs> interesting part was <clears throat> how a lot of the players, and I granted COVID going on or whatever, busy schedules. People are busier now than they've ever been. Former players especially are super busy. But um, the interesting part was when they were doing some of the introductions I remember Larry Bird and Scotty Pippen specifically and a couple others they're like in this room with a white background and they're like waving at people that aren't even there you know they're like waving down they're waving up they're acting like they're in the arena where the event is taking place but they're not they're like somewhere else so I found that a little strange I was like why are they doing that why don't they just act normal uh, it was very weird but <clears throat> and so another thing too was um, the the event uh, the the NBA at 50 in 1997 that was such a big event and I was so excited about it and it was a wonderful ceremony it was well done they actually did a DVD documentary with it it was great um, and I remember how how close everyone felt on the stage and it was very personal um, and again COVID being in the scenario but it felt very impersonal and um, uh, the players would kind of come out and wave and stand there and then they'd walk up on this round circle and they didn't really interact interact much now granted they were standing right next to each other it wasn't like they were six feet apart uh, they were right next to each other um, no masks or anything like that but um, I thought that it, it just felt kind of impersonal versus the NBA at 50 in 1997 I remember there was this one particular part where George Mikan who was super old then uh, being helped up on the stage by Bill Russell is kind of this beautiful moment you know of a uh, old man man helping an even older man you know like and they kind of their careers were back to back when Mike and retired the next year Bill Russell's rookie year was so it was just kind of a nice moment now Bill Russell's that guy you know he's the super old guy but um, anyway it, it, it feeling impersonal they at the NBA at 50 they were kind of you know shoulder to shoulder they all had these cool coats on that they got uh, it was like symbolic of if you made the NBA at 50 team you got this kind of letterman looking jacket uh, versus this event they were all just dressed however they wanted <clears throat> mostly in suits I think but um, so again the the weird white room with people waving at people that weren't there and then the uh, impersonal feeling about it and another thing was um, so in 1997 Bob McAdoo and Dominique Wilkins were not on the list but they were on this list, and I, and I think they added them. They deserved to have been on the 50, the NBA at 50 list, by the way. Let me start by saying that. I think Dominique Wilkins was better than James Worthy. I think Dominique Wilkins was better than Billy Cunningham. I think Bob McAdoo was better than those guys. And that's not a knock on Worthy or Billy Cunningham or uh, some other players, but come on, let's be, quit being ridiculous. Um, and So I thought it was kind of odd, though, that they added – them to this list and not the NBA at 50 and I guess that was kind of a correction uh, but there was a couple other players you know if they were going for the next 25 50 plus the next 25 best players <clears throat> I kind of felt like they left off I think Alex English and Adrian Dantley deserve to be on that list more so than uh, some of the players that made it there's probably other players you can make that argument for. Sidney Moncrief, you know, uh, a lot of players uh, that you could argue should have been on that list. Maybe Dennis Johnson. A lot of people think really highly of Dennis Johnson. Uh, but 
you know, it just kind of, it didn't make a lot of sense that they, those two players particularly, uh, Bob McAdoo and Dominique Wilkins, were left off the NBA at 50, but were put on the 75 list. So unless there just wasn't um, 25 players in the last 25 years that were better than them two, and then you could argue, okay, yeah, you could add them to the 75 best players. They should have been on the 50 best players, but they weren't. So I feel like it was kind of a correction on their part. Uh, I would have liked to have seen yeah, Alex English. You know, the guy scored more points in arguably the best era in in the NBA history <clears throat> in the 1980s. He scored more points than anybody, and he was just unstoppable. But he didn't make the list. Same with Adrian Dantley. He averaged like 30 a game for four or five straight years. Was on a finals team in Detroit. I mean, he was a good player. Shot a super high percentage, you know, just a dominant offensive player, but it is what it is. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to get some thoughts on that. The event, as far as the positives about it, it was it was very, <clears throat> very fancy, right? It was had a lot of the, you know, glitz and glamour of today's NBA that it wasn't the same back in the day. <clears throat> uh, but it was it was definitely a, a, it was a cool event, you know, there was a lot of, they had these diamonds kind of floating around, that was kind of the theme, the 75th anniversary is uh, diamonds, so that was kind of neat, you know, um, seeing that, and <clears throat> the I, I, I personally didn't like all the hype of it, I liked more, I wish it was a little more serious, uh, but that's just me. I'm kind of old school like that. I did appreciate how they definitely gave uh, a lot of credit to the old players. And I'm talking old players like from the 50s, not just guys from the 80s and 90s. Like they gave a lot of love to, you know, a lot of the old school guys. And, um, and not just the obvious ones, not just like Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Wes, Oscar, those guys. But like Bill Sharman and Bob Pettit and Paul Ayers and like they you know they kept these guys on there and I thought that was very uh, very cool um, and I appreciated that even on the intro when they were kind of leading up to the event of introducing each player individually uh, they you know they showed a lot of highlights of the old school players so I appreciated that a lot and um, anyway I just wanted to give some thoughts on it Overall, I'd give it, I don't know, not that my opinion really matters, like a C plus, B minus. It was just a little too impersonal. Too many players didn't show up. Um, I don't know. It just didn't have that magic of the NBA at 50. Uh, it was a little too much hype going on. People need that nowadays. They can't appreciate <laughs> what they're watching without it being a rock concert or whatever so anyway um, again just wanted some thoughts out there to see what you guys think um, tell me your negatives and positives about it um, who would you have left on who would you have put on there um, or would you keep it exactly the way it was either way so it's good uh, talking with you guys and uh, if you're up in the northeast stay warm be careful out there if you're driving around weather is horrible up here so anyway you have a good one and we'll see y'all soon